All right, all you positive heads. On this week's Soul Share episode, I'm extremely excited to welcome back the one and only Sandra Walter to the show. And if you guys didn't catch Sandra previously uh, on episode 559, definitely check that out a while back. Uh, Sandra is a way shower, a gatekeeper. Um, you know, on the original episode, five, five, uh, 559, she discussed her primary aim of helping to facilitate the great shift in consciousness we're currently experiencing on the planet by acting as an, uh, as a, as that's a tongue twister, as acting as an ascension guide. Say that really fast. And today we're going to continue diving deep down that never ending eternal rabbit hole. Super happy to have you here, Sandra. Welcome back to the show. Oh, thank you so much, brother. It's an honor. Oh, it, it is. Uh, yeah, it seems like it's been a minute. And uh, we got to connect at the Conscious Media Festival down in Texas, in Austin, Texas. That was epic. And I just love spending some some one on one time with you. Um, and then even learning in that, you know, these guys have all heard my my crazy birthday story. Your your father has my birthday, if I recall. Right. So <laughs> right. Uh, it, it explains our, our cosmic connection. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So. Um, why don't we do this for, you know, some of the listeners will have heard you, you know, back in here we are now, we're probably around episode 950. So you were episode 559 before. Uh, like I said, I highly recommend you guys going back. Uh, and, and for the record, any of the archives, um, you can go to positivehead.com and search all the way back to episode one. Whereas, you know, iTunes and Spotify, some of them, they don't go all the way back to the beginning. Just FYI. Highly recommend going back and hearing uh, Sandra's original episode. Um, but for those who aren't, uh, aware or maybe, you know, need a little refreshing, maybe you can give a l- little mini backstory uh, about yourself uh, as we, as we, you know, begin our conversation. Sure. Sure. Well, for those who aren't familiar with me, um, I, uh, this year is my 20 year anniversary, brother. How exciting is that? So 20 years of wow. being a conduit for higher level, higher dimensional Intel on Ascension and this awakening process. Um, so I've been a channel, some people say channel, a conduit for that kind of information since 1999. Um, so wow. I just celebrated 20 years uh, back in January of getting turned on in 99 and bringing in this kind of information. Um, and over the years, I have, of course, refined my process and been able to bring in some really high level, beautiful information on how this process unfolds and how we can walk through it with ease and grace. So now my my official title, if you want to give me a title, is Ascension Guide and Interdimensional Liaison. So I'm literally just assisting people on the path of Ascension because it's a challenging process. And I assist people in becoming the most brilliant, beautiful, vibrant versions of themselves through the Ascension process. And specifically for those people who are experiencing other dimensional versions of themselves or contact or what we call the embodiment process or the resurrection frequencies or DNA activation, that's all my thing. So that's the, the area of specialty that I'm dealing with right now. And it's, it's an exciting process and we're really hitting some new collective experiences. So for me as an ascension guide to be kind of walking through this and witnessing it at the same time that I'm experiencing it along with the collective, very exciting passage for us. Yeah, you know, and um, for those of you who haven't heard previously, you had such fascinating insight and the way you sort of um, experience and, and navigate your your you know, your job here, you know, living in first off in a, what is like a vortex, uh, Mount Shasta, right? I'm mm-hmm. assuming you're still there, uh, which is a beautiful, beautiful, you know, magical space in Northern California. And, um, you know, I, basically you're working multidimensionally regularly, like daily, correct? Correct. Yeah, this when I came to Mount Shasta, and that was uh, seven years ago. Actually, seven years ago last Friday. Wow, all these anniversaries. Oh, wow. right? So yeah, um, yeah. Happy, so I hit happy. my seven. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I hit my seven year mark, and Mount Shasta actually unlocked 
a potential for my higher trajectory as a gatekeeper, and that's dealing with the crystalline grid systems, the energy grids of the planet, some cosmic stargates, and this kind of out there uh, experience of interacting with higher dimensional realms, beings, ETs, um, that were assisting the ascension process. So I represent part of a huge subculture of the lightworker community that is consistently working with gateways and grid systems. And that in itself is a, a fascinating conversation, but it's all part of the ascension process. It's all, it's all related. So Mount Shasta is like one of the major nodes on what we call the new earth grid system, the crystalline grid system. So it's receiving and generating energies for a whole different level of reality and a whole new experience that we're moving into as our DNA awakens and we kind of get turned on to these other dimensional realities that already already exist. And then we align with them and amplify them. And then collectively, this kind of trickles out into the collective. There's a um, what's called a collective DNA field, the human heart grid, which, uh, you know, all of us are connected, of course, just, just by creation itself and by consciousness itself. But there's a conscious intent to accelerate change that is part of the ascension window, part of the frequencies coming onto the planet and coming from Gaia herself that give us that intuition, that impulse, that um, push to move into love, to move into peace, to move into change, to radically change our, our way of being. And that's all part of the ascension process. So the people that are working with uh, grid systems are also activating these collective fields within the human heart grid that allow for a collective DNA experience, which is what's going on right now called the embodiment process. And that wow. that in itself, like this phase is surprising even me who's received the information on this is how this will unfold and it's going to get this you know you're going to feel this way and it's going to feel that way and a lot more people are going to go into bliss states and it might you know tr trigger others but just keep going and now that that is the higher and the lower self are starting to merge Mm -hmm. So you're not getting the separation. You don't get the veil anymore. And the experience of it, for those of you who are starting to experience that further down the path, like where um, myself or, or somebody who's like what I call the high vibe tribe, you know, the high vibe tribe is the ones who are like consistently just on it, have given up everything in order to engage with this ascension process. So we're like snow plows just getting everything out of the way and clearing the path so that others who are coming behind us have an easier time of it. But as someone who's on the snow plow and up there up front, the experience of embodiment is like nothing I have ever experienced in this whole ascension process. And for somebody who's doing it for a, a while now, that's really saying something. The states of of ecstasy and bliss are not constant, but they're always there. It's not overwhelming the entire experience yet, but wow, brother, we are getting close to the higher wow. self just taking over the journey. And I feel myself, part of this is also DNA related because as more strands or layers of DNA, and we can get into that conversation next, start to activate, your other aspects start merging right in your own consciousness. We used to have to kind of toggle between realities, kind of like, okay, now I'm my lower self, now I'm connecting with my higher self, you know, back and forth, back and forth, or into other realms or connecting with other beings. It used to take a lot of um, expansion and contraction in order to do that. And now it's becoming this seamless ever-present consistent state of being aware of all of that simultaneously it's a little wow. overwhelming at first but you feel yourself getting smarter able to handle more tasks able to be more creative 
and and one of the most um, impressive things just in my own personal journey is my ability to not be affected, triggered emotionally almost at all any longer or the way that I deal with it, like the recovery is almost instant. And I'm surprised by that. Like my higher self has always been um, kind of overseeing that process, let it go, surrender, you know, giving advice along the way. You know, my team has always been guiding me, but now all of a sudden there's this merge where nothing sticks. And this is really fascinating to me because it also connects with what's uh, what's being revealed with multidimensional crystalline DNA for me right now and how that overrides time dynamics. So you no longer have this strong imprint on on the memory field, on the emotional field. And when that stops being like a dominant force in your right. experience, suddenly there's freedom, you know, and all, all mm. the masters, they've always said, you don't want another belief system, you want to be free, right? So sure. now that you have that freedom, you're no longer imprinting the field with these crazy dualistic um, uh, emotions. And so you're not creating memory fields in the same way, which is the experience of time is just imprinting memories along a timeline along a, a toroidal loop. Um, because right. time dynamics are all based on, on a Taurus field. So if you're not imprinting the Taurus field, that means you can experience other Taurus fields of a higher vibration, which don't have that density, which don't have that, that kind of feedback system that you get in duality. So for me, right. that's been like, a strong indication that, wow, this embodiment phase is truly changing everything, which is the, was the whole message for the last two years. Embodiment is going to happen in the beginning of 2019, and it's going to change everything because it changes the collective fields. It, cha- mm. it interacts with the fields of Gaia. It activates levels of the crystalline grid and crystalline DNA that haven't been uncovered in a very long time. And all of a sudden, your experience starts becoming your higher self's experience. And the higher self has always been kind of kicking back by the pool. Like, why is everything bothering you? You know, (laughs) It's always been like, why are these things bothering you? Let it go, let it go, let it go. So now that, you know, now you're in that state of nothing really sticks. And that gives you such freedom because not only do you have the freedom to experience your own heart as source, as God in, in a body on a planet. But you also have the experience of, well, now my consciousness, my brain itself, my neural pathways are now free to direct the experience wherever I would like to go or not direct it at all. You know, that's, right. that's You're proactive, really beautiful. not reactive. Yeah, completely, completely. And there's also this state of stillness, of zero point where it's like mm, nothing is really mm-hmm. important and everything's right. really important in at the, the best same kind time. of way. It's right. beautiful. It's quite nothing beautiful. matters and everything counts. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's quite beautiful. And, and it really puts you into that state where you're empowered. You know, that's a true empowerment because none of this happens without all the work that you do on the heart. That's the first mm-hmm. thing, you know, if we want to get into, Let's get into crystalline DNA because there's um, because science and spirituality are beginning to exchange information, which I love. I was just mm-hmm. uh, I spoke at a conference last month in Sedona and got to cross paths with one of the leading DNA explorer scientists in in the field of this mm. new this new quant- exploring quantum DNA, and he's ready to go into uh, a exploring quantum dna and it was just one of those moments brother you know when you're at a conference and like david wilcock was talking for four hours you know i mean david's like a walking encyclopedia you know (laughs) you just like right 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 and and he's always interesting which is wonderful so he's he's going he's rolling with it and he finds out that dr glenn ryan has, has actually shown up at this conference and he's sitting like three rows behind me 
and and David calls um, Dr. Ryan uh, on stage just to to honor him and have him talk about you know the key factors in DNA activation, what really works. And he only spoke for a couple of minutes, sat back down again, got a big round of applause. And all of my fields, brother, you know how one of those things where you know something, like you have to talk to it's that person. To you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything starts going off. And I was like, okay, 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 calm down. So, so David's presentation ends and uh, Dr. Ryan is lingering. And uh, Giselle Coy, who you know, um, from the Conscious yeah, yeah. Media Festival, her and I yep. were giving a DNA presentation literally three three weeks later in Sedona, um, a DNA summit, and I was like, Giselle, let's go talk to the DNA guy, right? <laughs> All so, right, of course. So we go, yeah, so so we hit it, and we go up there, and like the seas part, and and uh, all of a sudden <laughs> we're talking to Glenn. You know, it was just like wonderful, and it was just one of those one of those beautiful um, encounters where. We we just started rolling. I was asking the right questions. He was really fascinated in, in the information that I was bringing forth. And we knew something was going on. You know, you're like grabbing each other's arms going, yes, and yes, and, you know. So mm-hmm. it was one of those conversations. And we met for coffee the next day. And he granted me two hours of his time, which was really beautiful. Um, we really got into it. And we're actually going to create... Um, more talks for the for the collective about where science and spirituality are meeting on this topic but it's mm. um it's and and i really feel that um that we're coming together that these bridging conversations are starting to pick up right now in order to accelerate our understanding of both science and spirituality so right. and i feel this is a lovely side effect <clears throat> pardon me of unity consciousness itself, you know, no more separation anywhere. Right, right, and right, right. I'm I'm honored to contribute to that conversation, sharing quantum DNA intel from the conduit perspective with those exploring new discoveries in the lab. So a lot of yeah. a lot of the um, phases that were that were um, laid out by my team. You know, this is all multidimensional consciousness. I don't talk to I've never talked to a grounded scientist nor studied um, any of this. And everything right. that we were laying out, I was, you know, dr- we're drawing geeky diagrams of toroidal fields interacting. And I was like, and this is how they showed me how the multidimensional DNA connects and everything. Wow. And he's like, he's like, yes, and, and it needs this. And I'm like, <laughs> but the first thing, and this is, so my, my team had laid out three phases for um, activating crystalline DNA. <clears throat> Pardon me. And when you say your team, hmm. who mm-hmm. are you referring to? I'm referring to the multidimensional beings that have been with me, um, well, life lifelong, but m- more strongly since 1999, since that activation okay. where I started going um, clairaudient and claircognizant. Um, gotcha. Okay. So, I thought you were referring to a, n- a non-physical team. I was just clarifying. <laughs> yes, <non-physical. laughs> uh, you got to always be, you know, got, got, I got to double check with you, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> Although they have joked around and showed up in business suits sometimes in the higher realms when I was first getting started. I was like, is this a joke? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> they appear to, to you in a business suit. That's I know, funny. Down to business. So, That's great. Um, it, so this crystalline divine DNA is our key to the experience of shifting dimensions. So it's really at the core of the ascension process. But my team had laid out three phases of how you activate um, this bridging of densities and dimensions through the DNA. And they had always said, okay, look, DNA creates, this is how you're actually creating your experience of personal, collective, and multidimensional experiences in form. It's all through the DNA, because DNA Mm. is a photonic light receiver and generator, and it's serving as as an antenna or a way to transduce spiritual information into electromagnetic form. Like, it's all done through the DNA. So it's been like a very strong part of, of the core of my teachings. But the but the the baseline, like the the only way this is going to work, is for the heart center to get activated, and then the DNA starts to spin in these coherent 
toroidal formations, allowing the codes to activate and allowing this etheric rebundling that goes on. And this is something that Dr. Ryan actually saw in the lab. I was like, oh, wow. okay, they showed me that it's like a big tangled ball of yarn. And then when your heart center gets turned on, you create coherence. All of a sudden, it starts spinning in these sacred geometric proportions to allow this higher spiritual experience in the form. He's like, that's wow. exactly what we saw in the lab. And I was like, oh my gosh. So, so this, is, this is a man who spent three years, I should explain what Dr. Ryan is about. So this is a man who spent three years at um, heart math. Like oh, he's okay. the yeah. basis of all that information on heart coherence and creating a coherent heart field. That was because of what they were seeing um, it do to DNA. Like they're looking at DNA and going, wow, if you create like a coherent field with your heart, love, peace, compassion, it actually affects your DNA. It actually creates a space. Just to throw it out there real quick, um, mm-hmm. uh, Sandra, I, guys, way back, episode 166, I had the co-CEO of HeartMath, uh, Deborah Rosman, on the show. So uh, oh, if you want to learn more about HeartMath, you can go way back in the archives and uh, yeah. check that out. But. Yeah, beautiful. And everyone should because it, it really is a key to, um, to, to getting in your heart center. And they have beautiful tools at HeartMath, too, to monitor that. You can actually do it scientifically proven. So, right. so the phases of DNA activation were all sequential. So the first phase was healing and coherence. So coherence, um, a crystalline DNA activation requires this. It requires a vibrational state of equanimity called coherence, mm. typically called coherence. And that's that peaceful emanation of unconditional love flowing from the heart center. They don't, they can't see the torus field under a microscope, but they do see what it does to DNA. So, mm. and, and this is something that in, in the spiritual practices, you can see it. You can literally see the field around someone's heart. And it's, it's not just the energy field. It's a literal field around the heart center itself. And that wow. zero point balance around, you know, the heart center, that's the source spark it creates a field of energy, this spinning torus of coherent light that allows the higher self, the higher experience to do something new through the DNA. And, uh, and as, as we've discovered, DNA is easily damaged by EMFs, and radiation and toxins, low bar- vibrational fu- foods and, and environmental factors, but especially by our own thoughts emotions and actions so when Mm. we get into heart coherence dna can be spontaneously healed they saw it wow saw it happen spontaneously healed through heart coherence and the interesting thing um with glenn's work is oh i'm gonna call him by his first name that we're buddies so um so (laughs) so the interesting i'm on the inside track (laughs) i know totally totally. but uh i can't wait to talk to him again too he's been in china for like three weeks but, yeah, um, I want to. I want to reach out and see about maybe getting him on the show at some point. Oh, you got me, yeah, you got me we, intrigued. Yeah, we're totally pushing him in, into the limelight right now because I mean, this is literally the man who taught Masaru Emoto how to use the water machine. <laughs> you know, wow. like he's been around. So yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's beautiful, and this all ties together with all these conversations on ascension and DNA and everything. I love that it's all coming together. It really is, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, a sign for me of unity consciousness itself stepping forward, all this stuff coming together. So, right. this activation of the heart center is also a key to our ascension. So, this consistent practice is being witnessed under the microscope, and it's also being uh, witnessed by our own experience. So, The healing practices, the sound, the frequencies, light, commands, your own words. Now, uh, commands are are an old school mastery tool that I have always taught, you know, as part of the mystery school um, uh, tools. But it now it's, you know, it's been scientifically proven since, gosh, early 2000s. You know, the the Russian scientist who who said, hey, your your words have a 
have an effect mm-hmm. on DNA. And then, you know, Dr. Emoto took it into the effect on water. And of course, your DNA yep. is floating in water. But the, but the key to that first step of healing uh, and coherence is that the intention, this is proven, intention must be present and practiced or DNA activation doesn't work. You can do a DNA activation Shazam on somebody who is completely incoherent and they'll have a small bump for the moment and then it flatlines again. Like hmm. won't it won't stay. It doesn't stick. So if if you're someone who wants to explore activation of your DNA, your very first step is um is getting the bio landscape into coherence, into that state of unconditional love in order to hold DNA activation, which is the key. Mm. Because otherwise, you're kind of yo-yoing. You know, your energy fields expand and attract all the time. But we're finding with the embodiment process, which is directly linked to a, a stage, a layer of DNA activation, that all of a sudden you could hold it. You know, you've done your mm. work. And now you can hold right. that consistent state. And because you have so many um, first embodiers, that high vibe tribe that I was talking about earlier, holding yep. that state, it becomes a collective DNA activation. That means that it's available. It's not overriding you without your free will, but it's right. available to everyone. So we're literally, you know, we do those Sunday unity meditations and we feed those codes out into the human heart grid and create that field that anyone can step into, meditate with us, and receive those codes, and it slowly gets integrated into your system. So we are operating as one. Again, more unity mm. consciousness. It's really, it's really quite beautiful. So that's why self-love, love of source, love of all of creation is vital to restoring and reactivating and ascending Ex- the DNA accepting, within you. Accepting what is, not uh, stressing and trying to force things to to sort of manifest. And I think that's a big one for mm-hmm. us. You know, you talked about sort of uh, a little, you know, a few minutes back, you were talking about this, you know, uh, as you've uh, embodied more of your higher self, there's a lot less little to no triggering going on. Right. And it's, um, and I think that's a, for me, I think that really jumps out as me as someone who is very high energy and can, you know, uh, the listeners have heard me say it, you know, many times in the past, it's like my, my, the same energy that really fuels me and gives me all this, um, you know, energy and, and my own personal power can also, if it's if it's out of balance, that can turn into agitation and stressed out about a situation or being triggered. And when you start to realize that truly your triggers are your treasure treasures, these are the things like you, you know now these triggers are coming back to you in a way like you talked about earlier, where they're just like they roll off your back. And I I, I like to think I I've come so far from where I once was, but I still, for someone wired the way I am, as fiery as I am, it's particularly like a lot of work to to uh, get through and like, okay, Brandon, don't get in that 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 anxious, ex- over excited state, you know, learn to like, oh, this thing isn't going your way right now. Um, and don't let that put you into, uh, you know, take you into a state that's n- incoherent. Right. And that's really what what becomes the only game in town. The only thing that matters is realizing if I stay in a coherent state, peaceful, you know, love centered, then all of these things can happen, you know, um, you know, to my DNA essentially is what you're saying that that right. can uh, empower me and step me up into the next uh, greatest and greatest version of myself. And if I'm thrown out and I'm incoherent and agitated and stressed and and, uh, you know, overanalyzing or any of those things, then I'm I'm in that moment, uh, you know, disempowering myself greatly. Precisely. And it doesn't, it's not something you don't deny how you feel, but all of the things that we go through, I mean, it's literally those steps that we take early in the ascension process, the emotional clearing, the dealing with it, the self-correcting, the practices, you know, I'll, I'll get into um, uh, it, the practices that are most supportive for that state of coherence, 
but our meditations, our peaceful intentions, you know, our intentions truly change as we get into. So now, all right. So, so now I'm entering phase two, right? Phase two Mm. activation and embodiment and Mm. activation because this positive photonic light that, that we're moving into uh, in, in the galaxy, this bombardment of this new living light. It's mm. photonic light is living light. It's a source mm. encoded intelligent light consciousness. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it tells, it's talking to our cells and telling us to do something new, evolve, right? It's telling mm-hmm. us to change. And this is part of the ascension window. It's part of the ascension cycle. But this photonic light is delivered into the planet and our cells and DNA through crystalline plasma, which is actually a a very high state of water. Mm. So plasma burst and influxes coming mainly through the sun, through Solaris, um, uh, come through during gateways and more consistently now. it's, It's pretty much a consistent bombardment now. We still have gateway passages like what what just occurred with like a collective timeline shift, but we welcome positive photonic light into our cells and energy fields by creating that coherence, harmony, peace, love, ascension in our heart center through phase one. And then phase two is the activation of additional strands, sometimes called layers of DNA. They're never going to see it under a microscope. This is a multidimensional operation. But the interesting part for me is that non-coding DNA, formerly known as junk DNA, nobody in science uses the term junk DNA anymore, mm. by the way, mm. because... Mm. <laughs> because... There's no non-co- such thing? <laughs> no, because non-coding <laughs> DNA started to activate its ascension ah. in action. They're like, wait a sec, we can't just call Hold it junk anymore. On. Because this wow. dormant non-firing gaps, there are gaps in the DNA code structure. It's not like extra strands not doing anything. It's gaps in the, in the DNA strands themselves. They're like, well, this part of the code isn't firing. So now they were, they were, they were just calling it non-coding DNA uh-huh. um, because they didn't understand like it's doing something and it gets affected, but we're not really sure what it does. And all right. the you know all the psychic folks are like, those are your Christed codes. You know that's oh, right. literally you're activating a twelve strand structure and etherically reconnecting it right through those uh, what what appears to be dormant. It looks dormant right. under a microscope because it's not three D. You know, it's a multidimensional operation. So it's reconnecting right through those non-coding DNA and that stuff starts coding and changing your structure. Mm. Like I was showing Glenn, I was like, look, there's glitter coming out of my skin. Like we're literally going crystalline. You know, I'm one of those people that has, they call it, you know, um, some people call it God dust or whatever, but it's like you, (laughs) you look like you're dusted with selenite powder or something like that. Like literally... It's just like wow. the planets. You know how crystals wiggle themselves? That's how the natives used to find crystals, is the crystals vibrate. And they used to wiggle right. themselves out of the ground. It's exactly right. what's happening to our bodies. So we've been commanding for all these years, crystalline structures activate, let my, my crystalline DNA come in line, cells be more crystalline. And the next thing you know, you've got little particles of crystal starting to come out of your skin because you're... You're changing. We're evolving like right in front of everyone. I showed Glenn. I was like, look. And he's like, oh my God. You know, I was like, there's glitter wow. on my arm. So, and, <laughs> and yeah, it was like, it's always there. You know, I mean, you're shining, like literally yeah. turning crystalline because the DNA is telling the cells to do something else. And this entire planet is built for that. When you look at, you look at Gaia herself, you know, what's the, the number one elemental on the planet is is water. You know, she's mostly water, and then right. her her main element is um, the silicon dioxide. I mean, she's crystal and water. It's right. the same structure. Like she's built for ascension. So, as these kind of non coding gaps in the in the DNA start activating, and there's a process that you can go into um, through the through the ascension process to go in. And consciously call those codes forward for Christ consciousness, for multidimensionality, for the experience of embodiment. And because DNA 
is how the higher self projects our spiritual essence into a physical form with crystalline DNA, which is working right through that two strand structure. You know, the other layers mm-hmm. are, are those other 12 strands. Um, uh, the crystalline DNA with those activated codes for Christ consciousness allows us a different perception, a different right. experience. You know, it's all connected. It's not like, oh, my two strand over here and then my 12 strand with my, uh, my, my ascended self. It's all simultaneous. It's all right. Everything you need is right within your own body, right within your own consciousness, which is uh, just amazing to me because it's, it's interesting because during, as these different layers or different strands get activated, they all have different qualities. So all of a sudden you're not affected by the, by the lower reality stressors as much. And all of a sudden your diet changes because the body wants something else and no longer, you no longer want to put junk in your body because the body's like, "Mm, no, thank you. We're doing something else. So right. complete dietary change, emotional change, like all of your energy fields start changing. You start not just feeling the energies, you see the glitter coming out of your skin. And then <laughs> there's this mastery level that starts kicking in. If you're used to, um, you know, if you've been following any kind of mastery teaching at all, you know, that's a, that's a, cons- <laughs> you know, they are consistently present and very detailed with their information on what is complementary and what's uncomplimentary, and you just keep following, keep following, self-correcting, correcting, 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 and all of a sudden you hit this, the, the amount of photonic light and the bio-landscape and the heart coherence, everything like aligns, and all of a sudden you start activating your mastery strands or layers. No, they're, they're called by both. That's why I keep using both terms. Um, Mm -hmm. it's kind of like dimensions and densities, you know, people get hung up on that. It's like, let it it go. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) just a word. So let's talk about like the mastery experience, but all of a sudden you could not go off path if you tried, like it's, it, it leaves your consciousness. It's, I feel it, you know, there is, there's all of a sudden the negative thoughts are gone. All of a sudden you, you would not create distortion it doesn't even cross your cross your mind. You know, all of a sudden it's just leaving. It's just leaving. And then you look around, you're like, why are there people creating realities they don't even like? Or why are you creating that situation? Right. You know? And it doesn't even bother you. You're just like, oh, that's interesting. Look at that person creating that reality. Like you're it there's a level of um detached compassion if you want to go uh, Buddha on it, but it's it is there's this very detached sensation with this level of embodiment and mm. because this is new because this is a new experience that's kind of where we are right now everyone's just kind of not not pulling back from life i'm not talking about that i'm talking about a detachment from the drama or unknown outcomes or you know worrying right. about the future fretting about the past all of a sudden you're zero point you're just right. in in the center it's it's quite beautiful kind of mm. center of the of the whole hurricane you're just like wow everything's cool in the middle um, uh, it's, it's the really eye beautiful. of the storm totally, totally. You, you know what's you know what's really interesting about uh all of this is you know i had a few weeks a- a- ago i had uh and i'm not sure maybe you even know him jason estes um who you know sort of is is or refers to himself as like a 5d way shower which is very mm-hmm. similar to yourself and what was mm-hmm. interesting and he talks about uh, this very thing and being able to see definitive points where there's these major shifts that are coming. He's like, they're showed to, they're shown to me very, very like to the day kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, he said directly. May 18th was a big one. So I was looking at your site just before we jumped on and I noticed you had, you know, May 15th through 25th, the gateway mm-hmm. is upon us. And yeah. here we are now as we record this, it's like what, the 21st or something. But, um, you know, uh, I thought that was really interesting to see you guys, you know, sort of uh, similarly talking about these these same dates. And I, you know, read a little bit about what you had posted uh, right. related to it. And it sounds like you're both sort of saying the same thing that this
this is a really, really kind of clutch time. And he said this exact same th- thing that it was the the first. It was like you're, you're referring to him as bo- uh, embodiers, uh, first embodiers. That's what he basically said as well. It's like those who are sort of holding it down are going to go through this major activation on the 18th whole new mm-hmm. kind of timeline sort of thing and then he named another date i want to say in july or august and then something maybe next january I- i'm off the top of my head i could be wrong yeah. on those dates but something like that but um exactly but uh yeah so i thought that was really really cool and just a very interesting i don't know if you even know each other but i thought it was interesting to see whenever i see two people you know saying the same thing especially as specific as that uh i find it i find it pretty interesting yeah and that's been a really interesting part of this process so i for the for the last that's been kind of a side effect of being in mount shasta too and kind of embracing the gatekeeper role is all of a sudden the dates, the gateways were coming in. They were like, okay. And they would, they would download everything in December for the whole year ahead. And they'd be like, mm. okay, on January 12th, there's going to be five solar flares. And then on March, you know, it was just like wow. really detailed information. And for me, I'm. Is this shown to you in a meditative state? Just to clarify, like you're, is that typically, or is it come in flashes of downloads of information? Like what is your process? Uh, well, I, I meditate daily, but I spend time with my team every day too. And, Mm -hmm. but the, but the, the gateway process was kind of specific to, um, December. There's this passage around the solstice at the beginning, at the uh, end of December, beginning of January, where Mm -hmm. all of a sudden there'll be one day where they're like, okay, here's your gates for the next year. Like, and everything will just be laid out. And then as it gets closer to um, those dates, like like this May Gateway, they'll give more details on exactly what's mm. going to happen with can, that. Can you just shine a little light for those of us who aren't having quite that experience? Like, are you sitting there having dinner and all of a sudden they're like in your third eye <laughs> kind of thing? Like, I mean, are you seeing them physically? <laughs> like, what, what, you know, I just like so, love to get details of how exactly your team presents themselves to you. Well, this is, and and my perspective has changed quite a bit because in the beginning, yeah, it was like aliens showing up in your bedroom kind of thing. Um, wow. And they're and they're not, but they're like big sparkly fields, and it was more like eyes and a kind of a random outline of a body, sparkly field kind of thing. And then wow. they became more and more present. And especially when I moved to Mount Shasta, then I was having like direct um, experiences with them on the mountain. Um, but it's it's more like a blending. Mm-hmm. Like all of a sudden, I'm where they are. They're not where I am. I'm where they are. And wow. there's like, uh, in the beginning, it was more like a meeting, like we were talking about the business thing. It was more like yeah, a yeah. meeting type thing. And then that went away. It's definitely had phases. That went away. And now there's this beautiful blend. Because mm. I realized too that... Let's say, okay, so an oversoul has, let's say, 500,000, like 300,000 to 500,000 expressions running on Gaia. So a lot of the time you're just talking to other versions of yourself. So let's say wow. someone like Jason, who is also tasked with, hey, tell, tell the collective that this is going to happen during this time so that we can all pay attention and focus, you know, like gatekeepers, grid workers. We give everybody the gateway dates ahead of time so that everyone's paying attention and we can really take this on on behalf of every, everybody else, right? Right. So, you, so your experience, like some, like Jason would be another aspect of one of those oversouls tasked with, hey, tell all the light workers what's going on, right? So, right. I see that as like a collective oversoul operation because there's right. not that many of us here. That are, right. that are tasked with that kind of information, um, but it, but it's beautiful. But there's um, there's definitely like when I desire to connect in that way because in the, in the beginning it was a little overwhelming. So I was exercising my free will choice a lot more and saying, "Could y'all just just step aside? I'm dealing with like a lot of stuff." Well, now I don't have to deal with as much emotionally. Um, as I used to because of, because my process has accelerated. So now there's this beautiful kind of ever present, consistent, um, interaction. And I also have a a much different perspective on contact 
itself, like actually seeing um, all of those beings, other realms, masters, and everything as one big function of ascension, just like all part mm. of the same thing. Um, so that there's again, you know, no separation. It's we we used to label everything, you know, good. Right bad Pleiadian, Arcturian, master, you know, uh, whatever. And now to me, uh, all those lines are just being erased. I'm just wow. like, you know what? It's all just, it's, it becomes like, and I feel that's a side effect of the DNA too, because the more strands, layers you, you get activated, the more unification there is. And you see it's not Sandra trying to connect with, you know, the the head pleiadian or whatever it's not like that at all anymore it's kind of a seamless um question and answer or sometimes how about we do this i've noticed in the last seven years that um <laughs> they, they joke like a f- four years ago they're like you're about to get a promotion um and go into like being a master gatekeeper i was like i don't even know what that means they're like you're gonna put your hands up and m flares will happen and i was like what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> just crazy things you know i was just and and it's been and it's all documented now too like that whole phase that i went through i was like wow this is really getting interesting because you become you know we get woven back into the cosmic consciousness the cosmic fabric So you are one with the sun. You're one with Gaia. You can, I I even wrote an article a couple months ago. I'm like, we are the solar flash. This is, it's up to us. You know, it's, it's up to us to merge with that level of consciousness and go, okay, we're ready. Let it come forth. You know, and I've noticed too, in our mastery, the, you, you kind of tap into that monitoring system uh, that is keeping an eye on where everybody is and what we can handle. So as somebody who's, who's about to speak at dimensions of disclosure in a couple months with, um, you know, with Corey, who's, who's been talking about sphere being alliance. And as somebody who has spheres literally, um, in, in my gatekeeper crystals, um, you know, it's all part of the same thing. You know, we've been talking about that since 2008, that there was this huge galactic monitoring system and that we were, our aspects of our other selves were out there and monitoring the energies. We weren't going to get anything we we couldn't handle and that there wasn't going to be this big, you know, explosion at the end of 2012, that everything was going to be monitored and we were going to be given what we could um, handle as we could handle it. And that for, you know, this embodiment process was nobody was going to be robbed of their mastery. They're going to be able to go through the embodiment process and that the solar flash technically was already unfolding and that we were going to be able to experience it and bring it into our experience as masters. You know, we're going to be able to do that, but it requires unity. That was the big thing is like, you guys are going to have to get together. You're going to have to learn what's going on and have that perspective and merge with that mastery realm that you've been treating as like, you know, the ascended master realm, you're going to have to merge with that because it's actually you, it's actually higher versions of yourself. Those of us who are connected to that and you're going to call it forth. You're going to be the ones to do that because you're the ones on those ships, on those spheres doing that work. And that's the only reason why, why people like Jason and myself get dates and, and very specific information on like when the sun is going to go off, when this when this is going to happen, is because we're the ones on those in the sphere alliance, you know, whatever you're, you want right. to call it. You're, you're tipping yourself off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're the one. You know, it's like how do we have eyes on the back of the sun? It's like, honey, you're there. You know, yeah. it's like how how do you know when that's going to happen? Because we're there. So yeah. that's that's all part of phase two. Is that is that perspective? really getting into that perspective and that activation. And then, so, so let's, let's forge ahead. DNA phase three is this quantum expansion. And that's, like I said earlier, like each strand or layer in the, in that multidimensional structure has a different function, providing Mm -hmm. a more and more expanded experience. So you can't focus on activating, you know, strand five and strand 12. They're all inter, Connected, so it's a 
you you hit them all or you hit nothing. So there, mm-hmm. but there is a natural progression to the ascension process, which includes a tipping point where you go quantum. It's this pure state of multidimensional consciousness, which I feel that's perhaps what the gurus were talking about with enlightenment. Is they were able right. to tap into that state of consistent bliss where you are not just walking in both worlds because i feel something is something different is happening with this evolution it's not just walking in both worlds it's becoming both worlds right you know it's just this seamless merge of of everything not just here and new earth but like everything I think that's such a powerful thing to to contemplate. And it's something that I've often thought of. You know, I've had friends that are uh, several friends who are having experiences where they will be bilocated, you know, in another yes. another version of themselves. You know, like, yeah, I've told this story a few times because it's a fascinating one. A friend of mine who is, you know, she has very, very lucid dreams like every night where she's like, Brandon, I could tell you a thousand other lifetimes in detail. What's on the table? <laughs> what's, you know, and she's like, it's exhausting. And she's actually not like, it's almost like uh, my brother it reminds me of my brother a little bit when he started having out of body experiences, he wasn't mm. seeking it. He was never the guy first in line on the roller coaster. You know, mm. I'm the one like over there meditating, like trying to <laughs> make it happen. And then he, he's like, doesn't want it. And it's happening to him. And she kind of reminds me of that. And she's like, you know, it, it's, it's almost exhausting to recall all this stuff for me she says she goes you know i just want to like i just want some some like something to be consistent almost you know it's like the Mm. ground will change as i'm walking sometimes or you know sitting at a piano and all of a sudden it triggers a another life at at a piano where i'm playing and crying because my husband left in the 1800s and then she's able to play it in this timeline even though she doesn't know the piano or hadn't learned it in this in this you know timeline and that's just like mind blowing that people are having, you know, and I have multiple people who are having those sorts of experiences where they're in both places simultaneously. So it brings right. up a, a, a question to me for you, you know, something that I've thought of even forget about even pa- what we would call past, you know, linearly past or future lives and seeing those even oh, yeah. alternate timelines with this character, with this avatar, Brandon Beecham, right? I- is it, is it, Something that people need to, and it's it, it, it's it's something that I've thought of, and maybe came to me, and I've thought of, and it and even brings a little bit of trepidation. Like, okay, Brandon, as you ascend, this idea is for some reason sort of seated with me that perhaps you'll need to see all the other timelines that Brandon could experience as they merge into one, even though you don't have to experience them fully uh yes. is that is that a part of the process and i don't even know where i picked that up as just something that i've contemplated so let's say there's the me that you know i don't know at some point gets in a car wreck and then i kind of like see and feel that experience even though it, it like i merge with it but i don't fully it doesn't happen to me this time, but I, I sort of have to glimpse it. Is that mm. is that something? And I might even, have, I mean, I've seen this, I feel like actually in, in a show, Once Upon a Time, and maybe that's where I originally got the idea or thought, like, you know, that perhaps we would, as we see these other timelines, we've got to like integrate them to some degree. Is that something that you view as necessary? Well, there, there's a, all right. So two observations uh, on this topic. The first thing and is. And I threw a lot at you. I threw like no, multiple no, things at you there. I've got You're going to unpack all that. I love that. it. Okay, I love cool. this conversation. Thank you. So, well, the first thing is I feel that the obsession with the whole past life, future life thing was yep. kind of a side effect of the new age yep. phase. Sure. You know, like, and I feel that we are closing out that phase completely uh-huh. because so many brand new things are happening. So the whole obsession with who was I, where am I a, right. in a different reality in a different star system, like all that stuff, it's still a side effect of this, of the separation and like the anxiety uh, that comes with that and the searching and the, the learning, right. you know, the reunification. Yeah, sure. But here's the interesting thing um, that, and I want to make a, a, a cool point about quantum DNA. So, D- and quantum in this conversation is not like the tiniest thing. I mean, quantum in the multidimensional self, mm-hmm. um, just for the purposes mm-hmm. of this conversation. But, gotcha. but quantum DNA, our DNA is an aspect of, of living library, like Gaia 
has all your records. You know, she's got mm-hmm. everything that you've ever gotcha. been. But our DNA actually is is an Akashic record of itself of everything you have ever been from first separation until now. That includes wow. other star systems, other lifetimes, future possibilities, parallel realities. Like that's how complex the human genome is. And that's why right. it's so coveted because right. it can read and see infinite possibility. Like w- when we talk about human, you know, God, man, DNA, that genome, the reason why it's so coveted and why it gets so messed with and everything is because it has the ability to see everything <laughs> from a source point of view, which is everything, you know, and right. from, from a state of, and be able to create things too, be able to create alternative realities, parallel realities, different future outcomes, different timelines, everything, everything. And you it's all in your DNA, in your cells right now. So you have access and through the ascension process, when you start to access that, yeah, you know, the beginning part is like, who was I? Who will I be? Who have I been in the Pleiades? Who have I been in Lyra? You know, all, all that kind of um, obsession with, you know, uh, anything but here, you know. Right. Right, 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 right. <laughs> anything Get me out of here. Right now. <laughs> I know, because right now is not good enough, you know. And right, right, right. You start getting into your heart, and you start getting coherent, and you start activating your mastery self, and you're like, wow, none of that matters except the present moment, what all the, you know, all the good teachers have told us throughout the ages is, um, you know, for thousands and thousands of years is there's nothing here. But now that's the only thing that matters. And that's where all your power is. And that's Mm -hmm. exactly true. And especially from DNA that can read, navigate, and create your experience of whatever you want to experience. Like if you completely focus on the past, that's your experience. If you completely focus on the future, you'll never experience the now in, in what's happening you know, what's happening with the ascension process. If you keep pushing it out to a future thing, a future event, uh, when I get there, then that will happen. That's why all the practices have been about being so coherent and so in the heart center so that you can experience everything yeah, and nothing at the same time, you know, in the stillness too. But what I find um, really fascinating is that the, that record of of not just everything that you have been, but everything that could be allows for a really wild uh, aspect of free will to come in and go, all right, so if I truly want to engage with a future, not a future aspect of, of myself, but a higher trajectory and going in that direction, I know mm-hmm. that a couple steps in that in that direction in the physical send out like these multidimensional experiences into many different uh, realities and possibilities. So it becomes very multidimensional. Does that make sense? Mm. Like it's sending out that message to all these different timelines, all these different experiences and all the possibilities that could unfold, which is why if you can, stay in your heart and follow your heart and follow the love and follow the divine service, then you start getting higher and higher experiences that benefit everybody as well as yourself. And then when you start kicking on your mastery strands, you kind of won't care or what I, what I like to say, you won't carry um, uh, the responsibility of, Oh, I don't know if I made the right decision, the wrong decision, um, I want to try to influence things. I want to try to control things. It doesn't even cross your mind. Right. It doesn't even cross your mind. You're just like, what's in the highest interest? Because you're working with that big team. You know, when I talk about my team, my big multidimensional self, all those different realms and all the different beings, I understand now they are all aspects of big me, of big source yes. me, right, you know, almighty right, I right. am, all that stuff. Um, I, I understand that. And when you talk about the collective operation of ascension and merging into that and becoming one with that, then your your personal journey mm. uh, seems to s- kind of start dissolving. 
it dissolves right. into this really beautiful state where it's just like you can then you can observe sitting down at the at the piano and playing the piano even though you've never played the piano before and go hmm, that was interesting without attaching right. to it as like right. oh i used to be oh i'm going to be you know right. it, um and you start really prioritizing collective interests over personal interests right. and that's an aspect of divine cosmic mother intelligence the background yeah. energy of all of creation mm. and that already exists in the realm of possibility within your dna mm. and your personal choice to engage with ascension practices unlocks those codes you know that non-firing right. the junk stuff right Does right right I, I love that yeah so I'm curious, what are, I'd love to get a, a glimpse into some of the, some of the things that your team sort of, you know, I know you get these sort of regular downloads, if you will, um, mm -hmm. you know, glimpses into, okay, here's sort of, you know, what you sh should prepare for and, and, and let others know to prepare for. And um, I'm, I'm curious what some of those that are most pertinent now, I mean, you've touched on it some, this whole embodiment process, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that is going to, you know, it's, it's, it's happening on a major scale with the, the sort of the, the leaders of the pack mm -hmm. and it's going to continue right to trickle out. Yeah. Right now. And yeah. then, so, you know, what, what does that look like if, you know, it, it, as Jason put it, you know, the, the, the first wave of embodiers really, you know, uh, stepping into this, this whole new era if you will right now uh mm -hmm. more coming the next wave you know months behind that you know the next wave months behind that so what is it what does it look like uh you know a few years from now or you know what is you know and i know you don't have uh, the the all-seeing crystal ball necessarily at this point uh <laughs> yet um but what is it that you sort of um you know intuitively or have been show, shown or told you know uh would can be expected as this becomes the no, the new norm. Well, when you're dealing with possibilities, so so there's always free will. You know, the collective can yep. always say uh, it's too crazy. I'm I'm going back. You know, yep. <laughs> they can always turn around, try to turn around. Right. Um, but it seems like the collective choice now is like, wow, this is getting really cool. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And it's yep. all about unity. It's all about co-creation. And people are getting much more willing. To yeah. go into that because of this activation, because they're seeing the effect on those way showers that are just a few steps ahead on the path. So I feel that's going to make a big impact is like people are actually going to witness um, watching people change right in front right. of them. Right. You know, which is incredible because it's always been, I mean, I, I end all my newsletters, let us show humanity what is possible with ascension. Um, yes. uh, for, for good reason, because it is a demonstration. It has to be demonstrated in yes. order for a, a lot of people to go, oh, that's what mm -hmm. you're talking about. You, you know, see it and it makes it way more possible way more and plausible. Impactful. Yep. Yes. Much stronger impact. But the, the energies that are coming in 2020, and of course, it's somewhat symbolic, you know, clarity, but the energies mm -hmm. that are coming in early 2020, that's what we are preparing for right now that's why so when we talk about like alliances and and the folks that are saying okay we're gonna uh buffer the energies and give and get not give you anything you can't handle now that we can handle a lot more there's yeah. actually uh an organic ascension timeline that started kicking in last year just mm -hmm. last year where the inorganic timelines the stuff that was being manipulated dropped away so mm. all, all of a sudden your experience gets much stranger. You know, it gets mm. like, oh, that's what I was supposed to be feeling this whole time. That's what we're hitting now. It's like, oh my gosh, I feel so amazing and completely different. And how can I even call myself Sandra Walter anymore? I don't even know. That was just like an yeah. avatar, you know, for, right. for my work. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm like throwing off crystal glitter now, for God's sake. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, Call me Crystal so Walter now. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not changing my name. I'm not good at that. But I'm not going to do it. But I'm with you on that. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, but when there's that, oh, wow. Okay. So now I'm getting the organic 
experience of ascension that we were supposed to be getting. So now we're kind of in a catch up mode, which means there's this acceleration. So now you get the acceleration of first embodiers changing everything. Okay. So now you're getting into organic ascension timelines, which is a great acceleration because we're playing catch up on the last seven years. You know, what you were supposed to be experiencing in 2012, which got a little bit delayed. Um, mm. but nobody was robbed of their experience. Now you, you we're just catching up. It's going to go really quickly now. So there's when you say organic versus mm-hmm. inorganic, are you talking about like sort of stepping into these timelines that are more, um, you know, uh, spiritual based as opposed to uh, as we as we level up um, as opposed to like artificial intelligence kind of thing or uh, I'm just talking about like the manipulation of timelines that used to be a thing. You know, it mm-hmm. used to be it used to be very difficult, especially for gatekeepers and, and grid workers, because you were consistently dealing with, um, uh, you know, other aspects, other beings that were consistently trying to steer people off course and the whole false flag thing, like all, mm. all of all of that stuff. There's mm-hmm. actually a division, so a division was made, and those lesser realities, those lower vibrational timelines, are actually splintering off from the experience. So when we mm. talk about division of worlds or division of timelines, it's it's you know has been described before as like two trains leaving the station, and eventually you, they go in different directions. You eventually you don't see each other. That's right. multidimensionality. Like just right. like I was not able to perceive my team twenty years ago, it's kind of like that. Great. It, it's just like all of a sudden you become part of that team. It's like oh whatever happened to, you know, dot, 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 it right. eventually it will be like that. If, and I know a lot of other channels and conduits ha- have said that too. Like, yeah, eventually you're just not going to have the same reality because you're not in the same bandwidth. You know, right. It's all based on D- bandwidth and the DNA vibration in the DNA. Um, right. But I, I don't feel anybody's going to be fading out from your reality um, in the next couple of years because we have work to do. You know, this is, right. is about the demonstration. So it is about service. However, I feel that the the catch up stuff, the stuff that's coming with like the eclipse in July and another gate um, uh, beginning of August, end of August, and then the major jump that always comes with end of December, early January, mm. but is really kind of cranked up because of this timeline catch up because mm-hmm. of the because because of 2020. It's a really strong influx, and right. I, f- I feel as um, and and I know uh, my role as um, as one of the leaders, way showers, um, mm-hmm. kind of you know get getting the tribe together kind of thing. My service work is going into a completely different um, different level this mm. year, and I'm I'm just like abandoning a lot of the stuff that I used to do and moving into new stuff. And just kind of li- like you juggling a lot of things at the same time, because all of a sudden there was like a lot. It was just like yep. a lot of creativity. A lot of things were happening. A lot of things that you said yes to. A couple things that you were saying no to. And now it's like it's it's like a sword. Now I'm just like no, yes, no, yes. You know, just right. just really getting um, fine tuning uh, where we're where we're going. Right, uh, which is which is beautiful because that too is a side effect of the strands coming on the multidimensional act- activation coming on you can handle a lot more but it also gets more refined a- as right. we go forward you're going to find there's zero interest in a lot of the old things that you used to do and, and literally look at yourself in january and look at yourself now mm. like right. we we notice like whoa i remember what it was like in january it feels like a completely different person Right, like compl- and that's just you know within six months. So yeah. it's um it it's really getting it, getting interesting. But look, at, you know, even looking ahead and looking down down the timeline possibilities. I when when I look at what my like the high vibe tribe, and and it's not it's not about separation. I don't want anyone to think this is about separation. It's just an experience, a temporary separation of experience just because again you're the snowplow right you're going right. to go and demonstrate wow you can have a completely different experience and it's going to be awesome and we're just opening up 
uh, what they call the rainbow bridges, which is like a DNA aspect, a crystalline bridge to the new earth. You're going to just blast right. open those gateways to the new earth by, by doing it, by doing the, the embodiment and becoming right. that higher self, um, which mm. is just what the masters did. It's just kind of cranking it up a notch because, mm-hmm. you know, like Yeshua said, all this and more, right? <laughs> so you're like, okay, right. here we go. And there's a beautiful, sweet spot of a combination of incoming light, um, allowing that light to hit the planet, you know, from the galactic level, um, opening up uh, some very unique um, codes and, and uh, what we call the living library of Gaia herself, revelation frequencies, crystalline grid activation, crystalline DNA activation within, there's like this beautiful sweet spot coming at the beginning of 2020. Mm. And what that looks like, like when I try to feel into it, I keep getting like walls of light. So in a linear, from a linear perspective, it doesn't even make sense. Wow. It doesn't even make sense. I'm just like, wow, completely different experience that for some reason I can't experience in my consciousness right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's fast. It's fascinating that yeah. you talk about that, you know, starting, I mean, the last week of December, uh, last year you talk about that being such an important point in time mm. I, for me i got this whole download of what to do in this year which you know started with me visiting this property on january 1st which now has led you know here we are six months later as of the time of recording this and de- to go out and demonstrate into the world on a whole nother level i'm doing this new show optimistic which is you know mm. video production in the property with a live audience and all the listeners getting to come and co-create and and be on the show and have a retreat experience and demonstrating that to the world like hey here's how you create a completely magical vortex you know calling right. the place the, the mystic manor and it's like let's put it on let's put it on display on a whole nother level let's up upgrade right. it and so it's it's interesting to hear you kind of talk about it and then the timelines associated with it because that's you, you know when you said think back to january i'm like oh my gosh like i'm on this whole different trajectory that mm-hmm. you know Christmas Day, I wasn't on. By the 30th or 31st, <laughs> I had this whole download of an idea. By the 1st, it's like completely coming into potent possibility strongly. And here we are six months later where, you know, I move into this place next month and start shooting this this new show. And, you know, and, and it's going to be so public behind the scenes where everyone gets glimpses into the Mystic Manor. And, you know, let's show people how it's being done. And so um, I feel that like fully and resonate with it so much in my own in my own life. Yeah. And I love that project because it is new. Nobody's done yeah. that before. You're right. I mean, it's brand new. It's just that kind of thing where it's just like that between um, the co-creation aspect and everything has to be interesting for the high vibe tribe, like appealing to the highest common denominator is Mm -hmm. is the thing, is the thing, like appeal to the high vibe common denominator instead of the lowest common denominator right, you know right. and if you go there then it's it's and you're not even I, I love it too because i can feel like you're not really concerned if it's going to succeed or Mm-mm. fail or how long it's going to last like yep. i just want to do it <laughs> yep, do I, it. Yep. and it really yeah. is that it's like I, I i have i have no attachment to you know i've had probably five intuitives come on over the last four years doing the show like you're going to do something in video and buckle up your seatbelt mm. it's going to be massive and all those things and of course that excites me as you know that sounds so fun and i'm so all about it and into it but i don't need it to happen at all like it's just right. like like you just said it's like my intention is pure i want to have a great time doing the best i can giving the people who come and sort of experience it firsthand by having a retreat there and being getting a chance to be on the show too. You know, even if it's those 111 people are, you know, having just, you know, this upgrading, ex- upgraded experience and no one watches the show hardly or very few. Okay. You know, but um, yeah. And just to throw out for any of you who haven't heard me talk about this, if you go to optimistic.tv uh, and that's spelled optimistic M Y S T I C, that's going to be the name of the new show. Um, you can check out and all about it. I just, did a video that kind of gives you guys the breakdown and everything like that. Actually, Sandra, okay. I would love for you to come on as one of my initial guests. I'm just at the point where I'm starting to book
book, though. So we we can talk about that off of the air recording. But I think you would be such uh, an epic, you know, I want them to get more beyond just the voice, the whole, right. you know, feeling right. all aspects of, of your your vibrational offering, which is so absolutely epic. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe I'll come down and see you. I mean, I'm going to be yes. in Ventura in the uh, end of August. So maybe, Bam. you know, All right. just well, come well, down. I'm just about to start setting up the dates. So you guys heard, heard it here first on one of the, that'll be, you know, within, um, I start the first shooting is July 20th. And so there's a couple dates in, in August that we'll be shooting too. So so perhaps oh, well, we can link up on one of those. So we'll, we'll talk about that more in a minute. But um, oh, I, one of the things that... Um, that uh, I always love to hear, and I know you've got like more than a baker's dozen of them. <laughs> it's a good story of <laughs> synchronicity, uh, serendipity, a positive paranormal story, something really magical. You know, Ooh. speaking of demonstrating the magic to to people, maybe you can share a good story with everyone. This is this is something fun. So I don't want to bore anybody with like Sasquatch stories and stuff like that. You've you gave us a place. Sasquatch story last time, and I loved I know, it. No, My no, Burning Man no, camp no, is intergalactic no, Sasquatch <laughs> Village, so I am. Lo- you could tell me a Sasquatch story any day of the week. No, no, no. Let, let's go. Let, uh, we're going to appeal to highest common denominator, right? All okay. right, let's do it. So, let's do it. so let's say you're you're a psychic gatekeeper. All right. Okay. And I I went so last month I had. Uh, three events in Sedona. So I was staying mm-hmm. there all month long. Mm-hmm. And and Sedona is usually if you're um, like, I'm a, I'm a gatekeeper for Mount Shasta. And when I step out of the field of Mount Shasta, I kind of carry her with me. Mm-hmm. And I came into the field of Sedona and my first meditation was extremely, extremely vivid. Now, uh, vivid. This was on a, a Tuesday. So, Mm -hmm. uh, on this particular Tuesday, at the beginning of the month, my first uh, meditation was this really lucid uh, vision of all these circular, lined up, stained glass windows. And they had scalloped edges, and they all had saints, you know, different saints and like these, you know, holy, holy scenes, you know, and... Uh uh, but they were extremely vivid and they were all kind of like floating, but there was a, a light flickering behind them. And I was like, mm-hmm. well, that's, that's kind of interesting. And on this one particular, and this one particular circle came a little bit forward and there's a saint on one side and on the other side, and this, this flickering activity is happening behind it. And on the other side is a bull and it looks kind of like an astrological bull, right? Taurus. Mm-hmm. And it's leaping off the window, like something's happening behind the window and that it it doesn't like, and this bull is leaping off the window. Mm. And and this really stuck with me because like the whole vibe, I was like, something's happening, something's happening, something's gonna happen. And five days later, Notre Dame happened. Oh which wow. is this a big rose window that I actually drew when I was in college um for for a a period styles class (laughs) wow but uh but i was like oh wow the rose window is all these circles with the scalloped edges and the saints on it and everything like that i was like okay so that event was pre-planned because if a gatekeeper sees it days before a few days before it happens it means it was a planned event so i was like okay so something's good something's going on there you know and the flickering was the fire so i was like okay wow what's up with this bull right so mm-hmm. this, uh, but this Taurus thing um, connects to this moon that we just experienced when we were talking about last last weekend um, with this moon experience in, in Taurus. So mm. it's all this like, Taurus like astrological uh, movement thing. Um, and I am not into astrology at all. So you can ask your astrologer friends like <laughs> what alignments right, right. were happening. But they were like, well, then when this thing happens with Taurus and everything. Like this next phase of embodiment is going to happen regardless of what what's this event going on with Notre Dame was about. Um, wow. And I found it really interesting because I actually told a bunch of people at a, at a party, um, I was like, oh, I saw these stained glass windows and this flickering light and this bull jumping off of that and everything. And then a couple of days later when um, the Notre Dame fire happened, you know, all my friends are calling me going, oh my God, the window. <gasps> you saw you know? it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I know. So I thought that was kind of cool because it tied into the time, the timeline shift that we're in right now. You know, they give us dates, but it's like this big passage 
um, that we're in right now um, and the opening of a, a cosmic Stargate as well, because when they're showing like uh, some of the members of my team are, have Pleiadian aspects and they're really into ast- astrology, like they, they align things with like things that are happening, like ast- astrological events. Mm-hmm. So, um, so they kind of influence some of those visions sometimes. And then I have to pay attention to astrology during, um, during the gateways. I'm like, what's going on with astrology? They're like, Oh, there's big Taurus thing. So I was right. like, okay. Um, so I, th- I found that interesting. interesting. Definitely. That interesting, you know, because interesting. yeah, yeah. Um, because that's, that stuff happens kind of consistently with the visions. And it was like, right after that, I had another vision of myself standing on top of this giant stone structure with my hands up, with a big bowl in my hands, like a big metal bowl, um, Mm -hmm. almost like a singing bowl, but it was kind of flat. And there's all this like lightning and electricity coming into that, but I'm holding my hands straight up in the air with this bowl, all this lightning and electricity and everything. And a couple days later, I found myself on the Hoover Dam. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I was driving back from Sedona and I'm standing on the Hoover Dam and there's those big statues with the, their arms straight up. I don't know if you've yeah. ever seen them. No, giant I statues not. With their arms straight up and it's a power plant, right? So I'm like, oh, right. that's the electricity and the giant yeah, right. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it gets wow. interesting. That's kind of like Very cool. these fun little visions, you know, that present every once in a while where you're like, oh, that's uh-huh. what's going on. Okay. Right, right, right. It's so, yeah. it's so cool how the, you know, visions like that will be sort of symbolically laid out. And, and it really is like, the, I think the more you do it, the better you get at it, the better you get at interpreting the, these sorts of things in connecting the dots the more things appear for you to connect it's like it's right. it's like this pattern recognition thing which is sort of what makes us you know so unique as human beings and i think it's just that whole thing just is with synchronicity and all of you know even having dreams or visions or any of that it's just like mm-hmm. decoding and then seeing how all the dots connect it's like right, that's a big right. big part of all of this and and you're connecting the dots even further as you talk about oh hold on it's a different experience for me now because mm-hmm. i realize it's not so strange these beings that i'm communicating with because i realize there are other aspects of me you know and i think yeah. the more we can get comfortable with that notion the more it's going to make the uh the 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 you know weirdness that ensues um less weird and more like and not less jarring and more like okay whatever is appearing here is some aspect of self and it's it's you know happening it's not, it's not appearing by by mistake so how do i get in how do i tune into this part of self right right and even the terms that we use, you know, oh, it's just another aspect of me. That's not a personal me. That's like self me, you know, source mm. as self me, like right. the big, the big thing, you know, it's right. not like, oh, the higher aspect of Sandra is Yeshua or whatever. It's not like that. It's not like that. Mm. Like your perspective changes completely. It's like, oh, it's just another aspect of self. Like everything is, everything is, even yep. the planet, even the plants, it's all right. an aspect of self, you know, at the highest of, of levels. But I really feel that there's a lot of healing in that perspective and a lot of healing happening through this embodiment process because when you have that perspective and when you really start to feel it, not just a concept or a catchphrase Mm -hmm. or something you read in a spiritual text, when you really have that experience, it creates fields of healing on a quantum level that get people out of separation faster. So the mm-hmm. whole thing accelerates. A few people yeah. start having that perspective. You know, it used to be you guys meditating in caves or whatever. Now it's happening yep. in this widespread thing with all the modern day life going yep. on at the same time. And it's beautiful because you're, again, you're not toggling in between. You know, if I'm working on my taxes or whatever, I'm still my higher self. I, I'm not like setting that aside you know, <laughs> right. and picking up the paperwork right, right. or whatever. It's, it's consistent. It's quite beautiful. Hey, um, let's, um, l- can I just touch on like a few things that um, your tribe can uh, use for DNA activation? Yeah, I'd love that. So, cause we always, you know, we honor our natural 
progress as we ascend and activate mm-hmm. DNA. So the the whole uh, torus fields and the expansion and the contraction like a balloon, it's mm-hmm. easing you into higher consciousness. So if people are like, oh, I'm reaching for, for the stars, and then I come back down. I, oh, I, I had it. I had it for that moment, and then I came back down. You're constantly expanding and contracting like a balloon. It's just you keep making the balloon a little bit bigger when it goes into expansion, right. opening up the field so that it can become bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So eventually right. you stop the going way out there and coming all the way back and it gets you start lingering on the on the expanded uh, edge of the balloon. But you follow the ascension process step by step to assist the, all the, the mental and the emotional and the physical levels to stay balanced and centered. Because when, when this ascension process, say, 20, 30 years ago, people used to get really spun out. They would, you know, just, mm-hmm. just really launch themselves into expansion. And then the next thing you know, they're not coming back. <laughs> you know? Right, right, right. Like, like we didn't have the collective field or enough photonic light on the planet or the, or the grids were not activated yet to hold that kind of vibration in a balanced, centered state. And now we do. So collectively, right. we can really like go for it now. But here's right. a few proven methods for DNA activation. The first one, of course, is that heart coherence, choosing, mm. intending. No, nothing happens without that intention. Visualizing and practicing a heart-centered life. It's not as difficult as you think it is. It's love is truly all that is. If you direct your heart to emanate love, you direct your actions and your thoughts, you will entrain your your path to follow that um, that higher trajectory, that higher reality of divine love and divine neutrality. You know, it's it's a beautiful state of consciousness. Um, so that that's your first thing because the DNA activation doesn't work without it. So that's that's your first task is like, okay, I really want to choose this from the heart, not on a mental level, drop the elevator down to the heart and really make that choice within because ascension, of course, always begins with the choice to ascend because it's difficult. Right. It's not easy in in these energies. Um, Meditation, meditation, Mm. meditation, cultivating that peaceful, calm state um, is all Gosh, I, I don't know what I would do without it. I, I really don't feel that any of this w- would happen without the meditation. And it doesn't have to be hours and hours and in caves and the woods and everything. Literally twice a day for 20 minutes and you're good. Right. You know, find, find the moment, especially first thing in the morning. Because um, that's when, you, when your downloads are clearest, you know, if you do it right after you wake up. Commands and decrees... I'm I'm so glad that um, there's there's a whole new um, a range of articles coming out now that are actually reflections of articles that were published like back in the early 2000s. It's kind of fun to watch the light drive every once in a while. It's um, there's the new thing science has proven. You know you can change DNA with your words, uh, and it comes out like every couple of years. But commands and decrees are a long honored tour tool of using intention and voice to activate and expand the consciousness, your form, your fields, your DNA. It mm. works. That's the only reason why it was part of the mystery schools is because it actually imprinted your DNA if you say right. it aloud. And there's some, right. you can be super fancy with your commands and decrees and wow, I really go for it. You know, I write long, lengthy decrees. You can write your own or borrow them from spiritual teachers but if um, if you and it's it's not um, it's not the old school new age affirmations you know it's not this empty thing it's a really heart based uh, decreeing this is so this is my reality you know DNA light up and and feeling it and having your intention with that you know you're you're directing your reality your form to do something new right. uh, another one is. Feeling, so going from the feeling state of genuine forgiveness, genuine gratitude, genuine non-judgment, divine neutrality has been something that I've taught since the beginning of this process, but that pure intention of, mm. of 
staying in a nihilistic state, which is not going either way, not going too far north, too far south, too far east, far, too far west. You know, you're staying in the middle of, um, you know, you care, but you don't carry that kind of thing. That authentic right. desire, authentic desire to be of service to others. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, I think I'll step into service because that way I'll ascend. It really has to come right. from the heart. Right. Right. <laughs> it really has to come yeah. from the heart because it is the most challenging thing to do um, in the state of the planet right now is to really be of service to others because there's so many influences. I mean, it's it's tipping now. It's shifting because even like the high-end um, you know, entrepreneurial models are like, oh, if you give everything away, then people will want to do business with you. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> I'm talking right. about like a genuine desire to serve, to serve others. You really have to care about people. Um, detoxification. Wow. On all levels, spiritual, physical detoxification, mental detoxification, emotional detoxification. You really want to empower your bio landscape to handle evolution. You know, yeah. it, that's, uh, that's something that, you know, eating live organic food and activated water, yep. and everything's blessed and intentional. And, and like I said earlier, when you feel your DNA kicking on, all of a sudden, your body will, you'll be one of those people like, like myself standing in the grocery aisle going, I don't want any of this. <laughs> like, right, right, right. Like, what now? What now? You know, and it, it's just you, you start, you know, integrating the really high vibe, nutrient dense foods in order to support. And eventually, you know, you won't need the, the food or, um, at all. But uh, but we're not there yet, you know. Some some people right, right. Have, have tried that and have failed miserably. So let's just do it right, collectively. Right, <laughs> but, right, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're not ready walk- to all be breatharians yet, perhaps. Well, let's just walk through <laughs> it together, you know. <laughs> and right, right. Uh, you know, but for me, that's little- been a big one. That's the been a big one. Changed? I've changed. F- yeah, I went from mm. you know eating a lot of crappy foods in my life to now i mean i i started i'm not sure if you're familiar with purium but you know and they actually oh, yeah. they uh i sponsored the show or i aligned with purium to as a sponsor mm. of the show uh a year That's plus sweet. ago and and it's been awesome i mean i, I literally i mean i've had two purium shakes today i'm a, i'm like i crave it so much and yeah. it's just of course you know this hot it's very high vibe i mean the own you talk about intention i've you know know the owner uh both of them uh and you know i've seen one of them you know dave cry talking about healing the planet with superfoods and he lives in a converted barn you know he has this huge yeah. company and he lives in a converted barn in the middle of nowhere he's not he doesn't he doesn't care about ferraris or fancy houses or he cries talking about healing the planet with superfood and you have this yeah. food that's been dehydrated at room temperature all organic you know tested to the molecular level and you know i started about a year ago and i found it really an easy way obviously nothing beats having whole fresh vegetables or what have you but it's the closest easiest way when you have these you know the, the these shakes and powders and things that have been you know dehydrated with no heat and you know all all so high vibe in their creation and no biohazards within 100 miles of the farms and mm-hmm. all that stuff and that's been huge for me i mean like i said i've had two of them today and i have so much good energy and right. i crave that nutrition now where i used to walk into the health food store a, you know, a decade ago, and it, it smelled, it made me nauseous to smell it. Now I walk in, I literally, I walk in, I'm like, oh, this place smells like heaven. You yeah, change like, your DNA, you change. Ah. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy how it changes. I would have never thought, you know, I grew up in Virginia on, you know, having, you know, fried chicken and Pop-Tarts for breakfast. Like, you know, it, it, so it um, <laughs> it's interesting to see uh, people out there who think that, you know, oh, that, you know, never for me i could never give up whatever my crappy diet it is it's like no you actually reprogram yourself so you start craving uh a a great way to just even test this guys that i found is you know they say to have um a couple glasses of water right when you wake up in the morning is a is a Mm -hmm. wonderful thing to do right well if you notice a lot of times a lot of you guys out there probably having hardly any water throughout the day so i challenge you tomorrow get up have a, a a couple big glasses of water and watch all of a sudden your body at the end of having those all that water 
you'll be thirsty still because mm. all of a sudden you're like craving more of it. Like it's very interesting. So the same thing kind of I found happens with food, healthier food over time uh, is the all of a sudden it's like, oh, I just got a taste of that. My body got a taste of it. Now it like it's asking me for more, you know. Um, right. So it's it's just a, it's a really interesting process I, that I've went through and, and witnessed firsthand. Yeah. And the, and that kind of migration to the high vibe stuff. And even like for me, I've been a consistent faster. So doing water mm. fasts and yeah, you know, yeah. juice fast at first and then water fasts. And I, I have boundless energies during yeah. a fast and I'm just like, they say it's the best so thing you can do for yourself <laughs> basically it now. Truly is. It's like you, you get the, the body um, doesn't have to focus on you know, processing and detoxifying whatever it is you're putting in your mouth. And all of a sudden it starts cleaning house and activating stuff. And resting. Resting. Getting to and rest your finally. Cells you're- are regenerating and your DNA is getting turned on. And it, it's a, everybody, uh, please try it at least once. You know, do yeah. like a three day fast or if you've never done it before, one day. Yeah, I've done just, I've done like 36 yeah. hours. And one of the mm-hmm. reasons the only reason I haven't done uh, three or five days yet is because of uh, worried about during because they say the first few days you really you can have a you know drop in energy and it can be difficult. And then it get then you get all this boundless energy and everything. And mm-hmm. my plate has been so full. I've been a little timid to do it and and just in general it's intimidating you know when you've never went i went like i said i went 36 hours uh and i've done a lot of intermittent fasting where you go 18 hour you know you can do it in different ways but 18 hours on and well six where i'll eat and 18 off and they say that's really good uh as well but i i i haven't went fully three to five days yet but i intend to uh in the very near future because they're, they're basically now science is coming coming out and realizing like hold on uh, maybe there's a reason they were doing this thousands of years ago and saying oh, this is yeah. like an important part of what you should be doing. And uh, it's it's fascinating, you know, the autophagy that happens in the body where the cells are like, it's basically uh, recycling all the defunct, like, you know, kind of crippled cells. And, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, it's just like this whole fascinating process is happening. Well, even what happens with your third eye. I mean, if I really, I'm like, wow, I really want the the cosmic download. I got to go three days, just water. Wow. And all of a sudden I am in a completely different state of consciousness and not like weirded out or floaty or anything like that. Like I am so clear. I see everything. So it's like incredible. So I do that consistently. Wow. Like "Mm, if you want the download, okay. You know, it's just like all, you know, Mm thoughts and and everyone was like, you know, fast for three days and then you can talk to me. You know, it was yeah. like, okay. Interesting. <laughs> you know, Interesting. And it's because it does things to your glands. You know, all your chakras are associated with the glands. So it, it does things to your glands when you get all the other stuff out of the way and your body can start behaving in the way that it's designed to. It's really quite incredible. So I encourage everyone to do the detoxification. Okay, next Very point cool. nature. Yes. Mm. So sunlight important Mm -hmm. for this whole Mm -hmm. dna activation and receiving um photonic light earthing you know bare feet bare feet on the ground getting in natural bodies of water is really helpful if you're one of those people who's experiencing like your body vibrating all over or you're feeling anxiety because your fields are getting like too um uh not too expanded but you're feeling your vibration getting very high sometimes and sometimes it can trigger anxiety because you're like oh my gosh i'm gonna vibrate out of my body get yourself in uh in or near natural bodies of water you know stick your feet in a stream get by the ocean um Mm. you know jump in a river jump in a lake something like that it really truly helps and if you don't have access to any of that take a bath with epsom salts um Mm. or or himalayan salt or sea salt Um, but being in the, in the crystalline charge, again, this is all becoming part of that whole organic process of ascension that's going on and becoming part of that whole cosmic fabric again is, um, being in the crystalline charge of Gaia's new grids to align your fields and your heart often go and sit and meditate under a tree. That's why people did it because the tree actually provides a field of energy that looks very Taurus-like 
and it'll help mm. balance your fields. So go and lean against a tree and meditate or just breathe, read a book, you know, whatever. Don't bring your cell phone. <laughs> you know, right. Get out there and just really connect with the natural operation that's coming forth right now. Um, right. Frequency. This is another something, uh, another item that uh, Glenn found in the lab um, also works. He was saying specifically uh, Gregorian chant and certain frequencies like 0.01 hertz um, were, were affecting DNA. But from mm. the, uh, the cosmic download um, side of it, sofagio tones, high vibe music, vocal toning, you know, singing to yourself, singing bowls, tuning forks, and light language with the intent to activate DNA, all work, all assist uh, the DNA activation. And then the, the last thing that I want to mention is this collective DNA thing. It's wonderful to work on yourself and the privacy of your own space, but understand that the only way that this works is for us to place the last piece of this puzzle together. So collectively, the collective DNA aspect is something that's stepping forth and um, getting stronger this year as well. So connect with your tribe mm. to activate and exchange codes. We just did yes. a, a big crystalline convergence event in, in Sedona, and a lot of people were walking away. You know, we did the uh, an event with 144 people and then another one with about 62 and people were walking away going, I, I don't know what just happened to me, but wow, uh, you yeah. know, they could, they could feel it because it's like a you, Sobet experience, uh, like a transference of energy or Shakti pot exactly, kind of thing, right? Exactly, exactly. But it's actually, um, these collective DNA fields starting to activate within Gaia herself and within the human heart mm. grid. So when you're in that state of harmonizing with, you know, if you, I invite everyone to participate in the Sunday Unity Meditations. We're going on three yes. years now, every single Sunday, wow. four times on Sunday. Um, wow. Cut, that field is really strong, and it's all built with the intention of assisting the, the ascension. So if you tap into that, you know, if you're somewhere, you're like, oh, there's nobody around or whatever, tap mm -hmm. in on the Sunday Unity Meditations. It's a multidimensional thing. You know, tap into that field yeah. to receive. Right. and. You're going to have to deal with other people. I'm sorry, unity yeah, consciousness, or, but you're going to have to you know, yep. step forward, volunteer, uh, you know, get, go to, go to Brandon's retreat. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly you the know. vision of it is that, I mean, is bringing people to that, that is, you know, me and the, the amazing people that are helping to curate it is like, that is our vision is like, we want everyone to come in and let's, let's create this vortex where you come in one way, you know, it's a weak experience. So you have mm. a lot of time in the container oh, and, wow. and, you know, and then now let's uh, completely elevate the vibrations. So you come in one way and you go out and you're like, wow, that was like the ultimate spiritual tune up. And it's sort yeah. of like the, what is it that, you know, in, in, even in the Bible, it says where, you know, more than one is gathered, you know, mm -hmm. I am there or something like that. Right. It and works. that's essentially what it works. Right. And so that's the whole vision of the mystic manor and having everyone come to is, is not just being on the show and that's a great part of it, but, you know, to co-create that, but to really go deep with people who are ready you know we're surrounded by like you know you're surrounded by a lot of this energy i'm surrounded by a lot of people in this in, in the transformational community and what have you there's so many people out there who 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 is new so mm -hmm. getting you know plugged into that or getting plugged in you know to the mystic manor coming and and staying with with me and sydney and karis and everyone else who's helping to put that on and um or, or you know or like you said i think what you're doing is awesome because these global meditations it's a way to start linking up from your home right and yeah. starting to, to 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 play in these in these energy fields which really aren't bound by space time physicality right <laughs> Right, but I also noticed a distinct difference at the conferences mm. when you're so in physical were, presence with people. Yeah, yeah, and it kind of it didn't it didn't really matter what people were talking about. You know, there's somebody yep. on stage talking about something related to awakening and ascension, right? Yeah, but it's, it's what the vibe was happening, and, the energy and it wasn't like the conversations and the hugs and the connection. Like everybody is getting into the collective, the field. Of, yep. of the resonation of, of yep. their heart coherence and like exchanging yep. 
codes and activating each other. And it was just like, wow, this is, yep. this is really quite extraordinary. Very different experience than even last year. Like mm. I, I spoke at Cosmic Awakening uh, a year ago, and it was completely different, a completely different wow. vibe, completely different. I, mean, I don't know if it was the same crowd or not, but I was just like, whoa, mm. all these wow. people just, just took it up and activated. Just really, yeah. 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 Quite what extraordinary. A, yeah. It's, it's one of the reasons I absolutely love transformational festivals. It's the same thing. Mm. You get into a container with a bunch of other activated people whose hearts are blasted open, who are mm-hmm. aware of all of these things that we're talking about at various levels. And they're there with an open heart and mind and, and, and pure intention. And that I've had more magical experiences in those containers than, um, you know, any other, any other time in my life than sitting alone in my room or, you know, uh, reading yeah. a book at home. And so that's one of the, that's the thing that I'm most excited about the mystic manor for is just that it's going to be this container where it's like, okay, magic ensue. Let's create the field collectively and see what happens. Uh, yeah. so it's, it's, yeah. it's, and it's beautiful because then you'll be able to share it too. Yep. You'll be able yep. to share those experiences and then everyone can learn. You know, that's the thing is like the learning is exponential now. It's just like, wow, Mm -hmm. you learn so much when you're just sharing the experience and, and, and the, the yes. And, you know, it's like, yes. And yeah, the expansion, it's quite, it's the, it's a hundredth monk. It's like the hundredth monkey, you know, Mm -hmm. um, principle, which I'm sure you've heard of where it's, uh, yeah, it's like, for those of you who haven't, you know, supposedly it was documented. And I think in like the seventies or sixties or something, these monkeys were one of them started learning how to, I forget, do crack a nut or maybe it had something to do with a sweet potato. They did something where they figured out a trick to, to make it easier to eat. And then the other monkeys noticed it and, and started copying. And then next thing they know on a whole nother Island that is, you know, r- remote that was not connected. They, they observed, you know, researchers observed the same thing happening. So this was somehow in the collective field of this monkey vibration where once enough of them, started doing it it sort of spread through the collective consciousness and that's a that's you know we are you know it's like christopher ryan says in one of my favorite talks you know he wrote the book sex at dawn and like talking about us and how how we compare to uh you know bonobos and chimps and he's like we're not like apes we are apes you know we're like 97 <laughs> percent bonobo so it's uh it's really interesting to to think about it in that way. Now they're, you're demonstrating something for someone for, for another, you know, part of the collective. Uh, and now it spreads through that, that demonstration. And then beyond even, you know, uh, people needing to see it at some level, you know, just like the, like the, the events, the gatherings, it's like was less important what was being said on stage than what the field that was being, you know, that was resonating in the room and causing, you know, sort of a, a shift in, in everyone's experience. Yeah. And I think it's important to apply multidimensional consciousness and awareness to everything now, because it does go quantum. It does really open us up. If we can continue to hit that high vibe expansion as a collective and be encouraging, I'm really getting into uh, communication and the way that we communicate as light workers because there's a lot of strength in our unification of course um mm. but when the energies and the the when people start having a, a wildly different experience and sometimes it can get judged or it, we really have to watch how we talk about our tribe our collective the ascending tribe so and be extremely supportive of each other yeah. So that it doesn't, so that we don't have any more delays. Um, yeah. As you know, the sluggishness of that's not true. It's not possible or whatever. It's like, we're going to show right. everybody what's possible. Right. And just run with it and support your yes. brothers and sisters that are having those higher experiences and going, awesome. Keep going. You know, right. not like, oh, how come I'm not? 
Like right. really s- just say, go for it, go for it. Show and me what's everyone's possible on their own, and own share. unique trajectory. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's on their own unique tra- trajectory. So you, someone else may be having some powerful experience right now that you are not having, but uh, two years from now you could be somewhere totally different and they're at a different phase where maybe they're not or whatever. It's like, it's not a competition. It's like you're, you're your own unique you know, emanation of source. And so, you know, getting caught up on the comparison game is a complete waste of done. energy. And we're done. Yeah. We're old, so, it's so over. Old, yeah. new, old news. Yeah. Uh, well, this has been absolutely epic, Sandra, as always. I, you know, I, it's been a minute and I, I always look back on our last conversation as, you know, I've had a lot of amazing people, but I just absolutely so enjoy talking to you and you, you, uh, you you lived up to the test with your second album. <laughs> you came out with another great album. So it wasn't a one-hit wonder. You were epic. And I know before, everyone really, I, you know, and I've had a lot of people who've promoted their, their different things. You know, at the end of, uh, I always, I give people like, hey, if you have a workshop or a class or something that you're doing that you want to offer uh, to the listeners, by all means, do that. And sometimes they'll be gracious enough to give a special deal or whatever, which you did before with your ascension path class and i had uh, there's more people like that responded to that as many or more than almost anyone else uh, you know that i've that i've had on so um you know you definitely strike a chord uh with your your authenticity and just beautiful downloads and and i know you you have something new that you mentioned at the top of uh before we we started recording uh, a new class that you're you're focused on now Yes. So I was, I was, I was given a download last summer that way showership, like people stepping into a brand new level of service, like what we were talking about earlier, like everything's going to change. You're going to get rid of most of what you were doing last year and going, go into this brand new level of service next year. So I created this class to prepare, to prepare people, to assist people who were going through that and whether it's it's called Wayshower Empowerment, and it's mm, specifically cool. for people who are stepping into either a brand new level of Wayshowership, or they're wondering, okay, how exactly do I do this? I've been kind of like, you know, tripping down the path and I haven't had a lot of clarity or whatever. So, I did it um, in, in the Sandra way with a very deeply comprehensive uh, step by step, a ton of information, modules, videos, meditations, like all of that, um, and poured into this class. Like, how do you do it? How do you stay? How do you stay aligned? How do you discover that next level of service? How do you stay focused throughout the day and deal with the energies of embodiment at the same time you're trying to to assist other people? You know, uh, while you're going through this process, it deals with communication. It deals with how to light and code your service. It deals with every aspect of providing a light worker service, a service um, that's in service to to the ascension, to the awakening, to spirituality in this new light. So cool. rather than go over, you know, anything that's that's been addressed before, it's dealing with where we are right now. So it was kind of like a precogged class um, for what we're experiencing right now. So it's about literally empowering way showers who want to express themselves and are wondering, how do I express myself in this, this new thing that I am, this new thing that I am in the process of becoming, and how can I truly serve and, and discover my new gifts and bring them forward with integrity? Because everything mm. has to be with intention and integrity. Yes clear and direct communication has to have an aspect of co-creation to it. And then I also address like all the challenges of, of way showing and how you deal with that. Cause a lot of people don't do it because they're afraid of what other people are going to think, or how do I do that? How do I get by? What do I do about this? What do I do about that? What if that person says this, you know, how do I deal with, um, you know, too many clients, not enough clients, all that stuff. I yeah. threw it all into, um, Way show our empowerment. So wow. it's it's right where we are right now. 
That sounds so robust and epic. <laughs> it is epic. I make epic classes. Yeah. You know that. I, so. I know. I have zero point zero doubt, Sandra. You are. <laughs> you are because you are epic, and you uh, you are willing to do something similar as before, which is give everyone a very very generous discount. Correct. Yes. So the so the class sells for three thirty three, but um, but positive heads. How about two twenty two? And we'll give you a a special link on your site, right, Brandon? Yeah, yeah. I'll put it. Uh, I'll basically we'll put it at positivehead dot com forward awesome. slash forward slash way shower. So positivehead dot com forward slash way shower. That's w w a y s h o w e r. Yeah. Great. And awesome. I have a description of all the, all, all that stuff in the, in the link. So yeah, check it out. Yeah. Very, very happy, cool. I, cer- I certainly appreciate you doing that. And I know those who feel called to participate in uh, the way shower empowerment class uh, appreciate it as well. So thank you, Sandra, so much for putting that together. And uh, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, you know, this is, we're definitely running longer than I normally do because there's so much, I feel like I could talk to you forever in a day and <laughs> we're going to have to do that. We'll uh, get you on optimistic. If you're going to be <gasps> in exciting. the LA area. Yeah, let's make That's that happen. Exciting, so, okay. so s- stay tuned, everyone, for that. And uh, with that being said, Sandra, you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your now. And uh, <laughs> until we <laughs> cross paths again, journey well, my friend. Blessings, brother. Absolute honor to connect with you. Thank you.